Hi, Mike. I heard it was your birthday last week. Did you get any nice birthday presents? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, I did, and an unusual one huh. from my brother. Nice. Um, oh, really? What was that? Well, he gave me a copy of a newspaper that was printed on the day I was born. Huh. It was really strange to read what was happening then, especially to see the old ads and the prices of different things. Right. What happened all those years ago? <laughs> It's a long, long time ago, but not, not much happened on the day I was born because usually it's right around Labor Day. So, uh, but it got me thinking about the difference between newspapers then and now. Uh -huh. I mean, now we have millions of people being able to write all different kinds of things on blogs, social media, right. news mm -hmm. sites. Of course. Whereas a few years ago, blogs were just starting. And uh, well, wait, 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 wait a minute. What do you? Um I wonder if that's a real difference between then and now. What do you mean? Well, you know, then we had actual trained professional journalists whose jobs it was, was to report the news. And not only to report it, but oftentimes to investigate it as well. I'm thinking of particularly the Watergate case with uh, two famous journalists, uh, Woodward and Bernstein. But doesn't that still happen now, today? Uh, it's nice to think so, but somehow I doubt it. Um, news these days seems to be pushed in front of you very quickly, uh, then easily forgotten as the next news story breaks. Well, I think a perfect example of that would be in Taiwan. <laughs> when we watch television news in Taiwan, if there's some kind of a scandal, then perhaps uh, we hear about it for one day and then it disappears. That's and then nice. they move on to the next world shattering event. I know exactly what you mean. Um, let me, not only that, but some of the news is just nonsense or advertising um, or just someone's personal opinion. Uh, it's difficult to tell the difference. It is easily possible to create um, and spread virally content that appears reliable, but is not. Have you ever thought about being a journalist? Um, no, not really. But I think you know that I do post um, things online, like on Facebook. I repost yes, yes, news, you do. Mm -hmm. and I have retweeted quite a bit news stories. Well, if you're retweeting, uh, isn't that just sort of repeating or recycling what someone else has already said or written? Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Well, I completely agree, um, especially in this post-fact era. Um, now, yeah, if you're careful, and I check the new sources and information, and I try to decide if it's real or not, of course, before I retweet it. Right, so you know now it's kind of interesting because uh, we have fact checkers who are mm -hmm. always checking the mm -hmm. politicians. Sure, but I think we need to have fact checkers checking the fact checkers as well. No, you're absolutely right. Um, but I guess that's what makes a good citizen journalist, right? You check your sources. Uh, there's a lot of nonsense out there. There's a lot of BS kinds of things. And uh, for example, a couple of weeks ago, I saw a news article about someone claiming that his special honey was a cure for cancer. Everybody loves honey. Wait a minute, what? <laughs> right. <laughs> Usually we say no money, no honey, right? <laughs> but in this case, that's right. Apparently he had had, he, he was saying he had a divine honey cancer cure. Yum. Oh, what a load of nonsense. So it seems that we need to develop some new way of recognizing rubbish or alternative facts as it I right. totally agree with you and mm -hmm. we've got to be able to ascertain what are true literacy skills mm -hmm. right it, it makes it easy to see the difference between fact and fiction and between real news and advertising or even fake news right and we also need to be careful as the internet and social media and I'm thinking particularly of Facebook, feed our preference for information um, that supports our beliefs. Right, it's, it's another form of censorship. 
It is indeed, absolutely. You know, where we don't, they, they look at what we like and assume that we like that, therefore they're going to feed us that kind of information and maybe delete other things as well. So that's exactly well said. Uh, just to wait a minute while I post that on Facebook. Uh, can I quote you personally or do you prefer to be known as a high level student? Um, I prefer to be known as an anonymous source. Okay, anonymous source that's it is, right. Mike. Wonderful. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed your conversation. Of course. Okay, now we have a couple of questions related to the conversation mm -hmm. that uh, Mr. Brockman and I just had. Uh, my first question would be, uh, what sort of information would you actually post on social media or other forms of, well, what's available on the internet like Instagram or Reddit, Reddit, any of those? Um, that's a good question. Mine is a follow-up on that question, which is when you read something on the internet, can you be sure that it's factual? Can you be sure that it's a reliable source, or do you need to fact check and check the quality of the source uh, from which the information comes? That's correct, because there's a lot of fake news out there. And that seems to be a very popular term nowadays, too. Hmm. All right, 